Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Barely Pookish podcast. Today, I am once again joined by Candace, and we are going to be continuing on with Interview with a Vampire. Hi. We're getting into juicy tidbits, the tasty sure little are. morsels. This is like sure. the spice of this book. I don't know anything besides this now. This is all caught up <laughs> for us. Once we finish today's episode, I will not know anything in the future. Correct. So it can only go probably, I don't think it's going to go uphill. I feel like it's going to go downhill from here based off of where we left. I mean. (laughs) It's juicy. So that's all that matters, right? I mean, like there's a fucking child vampire. So yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's pretty fucking juicy. Now reading this though, I wonder if like this is the child vampire. Well, obviously, I think Twilight was based off of this moment. Um, but With Renesmee? Yeah. The I'm worst wondering name for if, anyone in, every, in any book ever? Literally the worst. The absolute worst. <laughs> but I do kind of wonder if the... Um, we're supposed to think that this is, like, real. And in Twilight, that, you know, this is the original child vampire. Mm. You know, that, like, apparently turned a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fine wondering, with it. yeah, if this was the OG, yeah, in that sense, in that universe. I feel like it's super scary though, because like Claudia is like so beautiful and pretty, and like mm-hmm. I feel like I would have absolutely fallen for her trick. Like I would have seen this little girl, like Mama, where's my Mama? And I'd have been like, Oh, mon cher, tiny baby, come here, let me pick you up. And then she would have eaten me, and that would have been the end of it. I would fall for it. I know. I don't, I don't know i don't know because i don't like children so i don't think i'd pick up a kid you know i'd be like um you s- uh hold on just sit tight we're gonna find an adult See, i'll like, find I, you normally i would agree with you because yeah. normal children are sticky and snotty and covered in stuff Mm-hmm. And they're loud, right? But this child is like a fancy doll sitting in the street crying on a bench with a cup of hot chocolate in her hand. Like, she's not... Like, I feel like that's part of why she's such a great that's predator. Fair. Because they work yeah. so hard to, like, make her... Like, they give her all the clothes that she wants. Like, she has everything she could ever want because it's that and Louis are rich. And they dress her in these, like, fine... In this finery and these, like, beautiful linens and, like, mm-hmm. beautiful shoes with, like, fancy buckles. and You know what I mean? Like, she yeah. looks expensive. So I feel mm-hmm. like people would look at her and be like, oh, that must be like a member of the, you know, of the nobility or something like that. Like this girl must belong to somebody who's like important. Right. So like that's where the trap because like, I mean, if I'm on a plane and there's a child sitting in the seat in front of me, I'm like, can someone switch with me? <laughs> I, I right. don't like being near children like that. Um, I had a child who had a hand full of peanut butter and jelly once put it in my hair on a plane to San Diego Comic-Con. So understand not interested in most children like that um, awful <laughs> yeah, it was terrible like it was it got progressively closer and closer like the hand to my head and my face and i just kept leaning back until eventually i couldn't lean anymore and this kid was like his feet were on like the back of the chair in front of him and he was like like basically prone but over top the top of the seat on the airplane to like reach me and like touch my forehead and my hair and i got like jam in my like all in the front of my head. It was just really, and his parents were not adequately apologetic. So the whole experience was just terrible. Um, but you will not, you will not get such things from this fancy yeah. vampire child. This fancy vampire child is like my outfit costs more than your entire wardrobe. So pick I me up. Can't, <laughs> I can't imagine being like a hundred years old trapped in the body of a child. Like men go crazy. Yeah. Go mentally, nuts. Is she growing? Yeah, I don't so, know. so mentally, like, I feel like when she turns, like, Lestat, Lestat doesn't care. He's just trying to, like, trap Louis, so he doesn't really give a shit. He doesn't really notice. Um, but, like, Louis, when he's looking at her, I feel like one of the things he says is, like, she already had the eyes of a woman, like, after she became a vampire, because mm-hmm. there's a knowing that you get with that power of yeah. the supernatural. So, like, having that, like, already made her grow up. And yeah. I feel like... I kind of like how, how Rice kind of pushes us along too in the book with time because Mm -hmm. these characters don't age. So like time is like even more of a construct than it would be in another book, right? Like Mm -hmm. 25 years, 50 years in like the notebook 
is very different than 25, 50 years in a book about vampires, right? Like they, they're not going to change like by, by their nature, they're always going to be the same. So like, that's what I feel is really the trick is like the way Claudia talks and how Mm -hmm. the questions that she asks, I feel like that's the way that we know that she's growing older when she starts kind of having her existential crisis, which like that's familiar territory for me. Lots of existential crises. (laughs) Food. over here the other thing i wonder though too is like i feel like you can never have an adult relationship in that sort of situation i mean you can with a fucking creep yeah like i feel like you're always <laughs> going to be exposed to pedophiles yeah you know that's what I mean? essentially that's essentially who you're working with um octavia butler has a book called fledgling that's about mm-hmm. um a black girl vampire and um she made her her protagonist Mm -hmm. 12 like she looks like a 12 year old girl Mm -hmm. so this Mm -hmm. is definitely worse because five right but like her character is a 12 year old girl and does have like interest in romantic and sexual relationships and so it talks about like the navigation of that and how this girl like i found it interesting that she put this in the book but like the girl basically is like acknowledges that there are pedophiles so sometimes she feeds off of pedophiles. Like if someone approaches her and seems too eager to be with her, despite being 12, they have no hesitation. Their heart mm-hmm. doesn't catch in their throat in like a way that means they're scared or nervous. She eats them because she's like, this person is obviously a bad person. He wanted me because I was young. But if, he, if yeah. she meets somebody and uses like her glamour on them and they're interested and she can like tell that their intentions are pure, then she'll, then she'll stay around them. But like, it's an interesting call out. And I I did wonder, like when I was reading it, I was like, I wonder if that's like a call out um, to kind of circumnavigate like this situation. Because like in the movie, they, they have to age her up. You can't have a five-year-old actress portraying this like sexy vampire. Like it's hard yeah. enough having Kirsten Dunst at like 12 playing Claudia. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like let alone mm-hmm. a five-year-old. So it's, it was definitely an interesting choice to make. I feel like if this book were written now, she would not be five. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, you know, we get the out of story experience where Louis like, "Hey, interviewer, are you still like afraid of me? Are you cool?" And like, guys, like, I literally don't even know how to feel. But like, could you get back to the story, please? Which is uh, <laughs> same energy, <laughs> same energy. I love that reaction. It's very good. Yeah, I need more information before I can make a decision. Could you? Uh... <laughs> Big same. Like, I'm just imagining that at this point, he's been telling this story probably for a couple hours. Yeah. And like, you know, Louis like, before I continue, do you have to like bathroom or anything? And the guy's like, bathroom? <laughs> at a time like this? this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're talking about child vampires, you asshole. Keep talking. <laughs> yeah, he's like, please continue. Um... I've gotten a lot of questions. Anyways, Claudia, what was her name? <laughs> like, not what was her name? What was her deal? You know? Yeah. So Louis like, all right, back to my downward spiral. So um, <laughs> he's like, I couldn't handle all of this. Uh, so yeah, I was just kind of killing to survive. Claudia is learning everything really fast. Um, she also likes to play with her kills like her father, which was a good moment where he's like acting like they're the actual parents. Of oh yeah, Claudia, big time. Louis is obviously the mom. Um, yeah, and like I love how he like scolds both of them too. Can you guys mm-hmm. stop bringing carcasses here? Like they're like, all right, jeez, you're so uptight, Dad. Like very yeah. like Lestat is not the dad; he is the older brother, and Louis is parenting both of them. If we're gonna be real. Um, yeah yeah (laughs) Claudia is his friend not Lestat's daughter (laughs) yeah it felt like that moment where you know when someone marries and it's always they marry a man and that they refer to that man as their child Mm -hmm. that's the situation we're in yeah super awkward yeah (laughs) except like most of your grandparents these people hate their spouse yep yeah like i'm not about that life yeah literally he's like you know the real ball and chain yeah no i can't. um so after years louis just realizing that claudia won't grow up and at this point it seems like it's probably been about 20 years and he's like i don't think she's gonna grow anymore <laughs> which is my favorite thing that it 
you know, because from like five to seven, there's a huge like growth, you know, yep. five year olds year over year are going to grow pretty quickly. Like it's going to be a lot of noticeable change change. And so the fact that it probably took him multiple years to even notice kind of makes me giggle. Yeah. I also feel like the, like this, this, like, I feel like it, it speaks volumes, especially of Lestat that they don't notice because there's other yeah. things that are happening to her that they're not noticing. Right. Like they're not noticing that she like stays out late by herself. Sometimes they're not noticing that like she's, like more withdrawn or that she talks a little bit less she takes more time answering right like there's mm -hmm. these little things that like louis like telling this to the boy is recognizing mm -hmm. and realizing right is are, that these are things that he wasn't noticing but they're mm -hmm. things that like were still on his radar he just wasn't kind of commenting on them um yeah. and i love that like i really like that slow burn like it only it happens over the course of like what maybe 10 pages but like i love the mm -hmm. slow burn of her just like because like it's like 10 pages and you're like through i think 40 years or something like that like it's been 40 years yeah. suddenly and he's bought you know a new house and a new place on the square and like there's like a fancy area behind it and blah 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 right there's all the stuff that like they're they're doing to change their lifestyle in the city and make things better for themselves and for claudia but like mm -hmm. they're not actively paying attention to her and like her journey and what she needs or wants mm -hmm. and it is wild like it's so wild to like especially seeing where it like kind of how it ladders up to her curiosity about like her place in the world yeah. like they do not see that conversation coming at i all. know <laughs> it's fun like even this next commentary where he like quality is like hey i kind of want my own coffin because you know yeah. he's been having her share a coffin with him right you know right like she was still five and like this woman baby is, yeah this woman's probably like 50 at this point Yep. you know yep and then yeah. also we get some weird thing about claudia being obsessed with poverty which is yeah weird. which okay i'm gonna say it It seems like a lot of rich people get obsessed with poverty don't understand yeah. it like just give me your money i don't know like yeah you don't have to hand it to me you don't have to be I can rich. Help you with that yeah <laughs> i'll Not leave you of your pain yeah i know it's um, so stressful let me just I, take your Teslas and your, uh, <laughs> you know, your Maserati. I can drive that too. Who needs to vacation in the south of France again? Again, yeah, south I, of France? Send me, okay? I'll have yeah. a great time for you. I'll take pictures. Yeah. I'll send you my face while I'm eating and drinking all those delicious fineries. I will send um, you back my <laughs> weekly budget and let yes. me know how it goes for you. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's cheap compared to what you usually spend. How good for you? <laughs> for you. Okay. yeah like i think that like the reason that claudia is so obsessed with poverty is because she doesn't like again she doesn't know where she comes from she's mm -hmm. just always had things like in her mind she's just like always had this this rich life yeah. um and i feel like the moment that she like understands that fills in the gaps of why she's so obsessed with poverty because she used to yeah be. Yeah, and that too, it's like, it's also hard because she's the only vampire that doesn't remember a before. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. also adding to it. Because every vampire, like, while it seems to be kind of foggy or like through rose-tinted glasses, yeah. they remember that before and she has no memory of her before. Not even a little bit. And like, I feel like that's the biggest difference too. Like you have those moments where Louis like is, is being self-reflective Mm -hmm. And he recognizes that the reason that Claudia and Lestat can go hunting and are good hunting partners together is because Lestat rejects his humanity and Claudia's mm -hmm. never really had any. Because yeah. children children operate on their most base instincts. Like that's what raising a child is, right? Mm -hmm. Is like ripping kind of like kind of not ripping away, but like separating those like very instinctual processes that kids are, you know, the kids exhibit, those behaviors that they exhibit because they're just like literally tabula rasa you know when they're born um mm -hmm. so like all those instinctual things like crying because you're cold crying as a, as a reaction to stimuli instead of understanding it and talking about it right can you make it warmer in here like that's something mm -hmm. a kid has to learn right they don't know that they just scream and somebody changes it so like the idea that like making a child because that's something that that i don't think i really understood when i read this when i was younger was like 
the depth of meaning of changing it of, of making a child into a vampire because like mm -hmm. they have no understanding of the world around them so to go from like little understanding to vampire understanding where you're like seeing people's heartbeats and shit like yeah. like she's she's basically like a very fancy polished wild animal like that's basically mm -hmm. what she is until she can finally learn how to rein it in well that too and it's like for kids like think about it like most two-year-olds will smack the shit out of you mm -hmm. imagine you give that two-year-old vampire strength no yeah no thank or you or like you know how like little kids just like bite you yeah yeah no thank no. you or it, I had this conversation with, like Daniel always brings us up about what if Moon was the size of a panther? No. And I'm like, he's like, would you still love her? Like, it's like the. I mean, I yes. Yeah. I'm but like, I would yeah. Be dead. She would kill me. <laughs> yes. Or, Probably you know, by accident. <laughs> we do this thing where Moon, like, you know how, like, when. Darth Vader goes to, like choke someone out with the force. He like does his mm -hmm. open hand grab like a little Lego hand. Yeah. We do that to Moon and that means like that's what brings Moon to us to like play. That's like mm -hmm. our play face. Like hold on I'll do it really quick so you can see it. The listeners don't get that great bit of <laughs> okay or fall over. Let me see. Psst. Let's see if we'll do it. I don't know if she'll do it because she's on my thing but hold on. Can you see her well enough from right there? Yes. Are you not going to do it because you're on camera? <laughs> no? Okay. She's All like, right, I'm, not, she's like I'm not going to do it for the paparazzi. That's yeah. our special private thing that we do. <laughs> I'm not doing she, it on camera she's gonna do so it your now. friend she's can see. Here. Yeah. All right. Never mind. Fuck me. It's fine. Um, I'm going to get a video of it later. <laughs> How are you not doing it right now? This is your favorite thing. Okay. Really? I can show you her tricks really quick though while she's right here. Ready? Let's see. If you'll do that. Move. Hey, pay attention to me. Move. Sit. <laughs> Move. Here, sit. Come on. Really? Move. Alright, never mind. Fine. Go do your own thing. Never she mind. knows what you're trying to do and she's unimpressed. Okay. <laughs> Sit. Uh. Sit. Oh, what the fuck, dude? Oh. Sit. Or lay down. That's you know what, that's fine. You're pouring up a little storm there, even though you're not listening to your mother. <laughs> She's now? real cute though, and she knows it. No, okay, fine, fine. You can just mind your own business over there then. Never mind. No. Anyways. Not interested. Yeah. So I compare Moon versus Puma Moon to the same thing with Claudia versus Vampire Claudia. Yeah. You know, like Danger zone. terrifying. Absolutely yeah. horrifying. Well, I mean then those then those those two people their servants go missing. Mm -hmm. It's like the the wife, I think, and, and daughter of like someone that's like local. Yeah, it's uh, the mother and the daughter of a servant. And then I think he also worked for the house at yeah. some point. Yeah. Yeah. This was like the first real indicator. This like just how much time has passed that they started using the word servant. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, Oh, I see. In a while, <laughs> you know. But yeah, yeah. Like, so, Claudia kills them and stuffs them. Oh, the father. Never mind. I thought I knew the answer. I think they're farmers or something. But yeah, yeah. So the father and the brother, Lestat, kills them to prevent questions, which is right. Ex way to handle. Yeah. Excessive. <laughs> So, but like does that but then it's like why did she murder these people and it's like i mean you're doing the same yeah. no Literally. but like i think i think that's the moment when she finally breaks and has her like big moment of questioning because she's like there's something and that's and that i think is also like it ties back to the fact that she has no like memory right of being human mm -hmm. 
because there's something that draws her to the mother daughter relationship. And we know that when she was found, it was in the mother daughter situation. Um, mm-hmm. And that's super hurtful. Like that's so like, when I read that, like it crushed me. I'm very close to my mom. And I'm like, if I were a vampire, I'd probably go looking for a mom too, or like try to turn my mom into a vampire so that we could be friends forever. But like, Fair. I just, it just, it hurts. It hurts really bad to see um, because like, it's just so obvious that like these two men have not thought at all about this situation that they've created outside of what it does for them. Yeah. And her rage is like so keen and fucking like incisive. Like what she's like, she just knocks them, blows them away. Which one of you made me what I am? Like who did this to me? Like, Mm -hmm. I fucking hate this. Like, whoa. It's like, it's like teen angst times a thousand. Well, because it's the worst part too is that like there's no way to fix this for her no like you can't like age yourself up at all yep only you know? death will fix it yeah so it's like for her to continue her life she has to continue living with what they did to her every single day mm-hmm. and the implications that has with all of her relationships outside of these people because you know if she wants to leave them and live outside of that situation like she's gonna be treated like a child forever Mm -hmm. she'll never have that level of respect and then like like i know what happens later in the book so i'm not going to spoil Mm -hmm. but i will say this is like a good thing to revisit in later chapters because it does come up again in a very interesting way um like this whole idea of like being unchangeable and what that means both for herself and for the people around her Mm -hmm. Um, and how that childlike curiosity very quickly turns to like the curiosity of a predator. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, I think that like her rage is so understandable, especially like when you think like she's not having sexual or romantic like instances with people right like the most romantic that she really gets is like with Lestat and Louis like those are like her most romantic relationships and they're not really like romantic right they're more like just deep love um and I feel like when she starts realizing that romantic love is an option when she realizes that like motherly love is an option and she sees all these different types of love that are that are inaccessible to her that's when it finally like the other shoe finally drops And it's Mm -hmm. terrifying, like, to read that as somebody who, like, I'm non-binary, but, like, I also identify as a woman. And, Mm -hmm. like, knowing what it's like feeling isolated as a woman, right? Feeling like the choices have been made for you by people who don't understand and could never understand your situation. Like, Mm -hmm. that's so oppressive. So to consider that when you are, A, even less empowered because you're a child, and B... You're less empowered because of the timeline, right? Even if she was a woman, she'd still not really be able, like, to be super safe by herself, right? And then see, on top of all of that, the people who did this to you. It's not even like it's just people reacting, right? Like, when you're, let's say you have a day and you have your period and you're, like, miserable and you're like, listen, I can't work. I've thrown up three times for my cramps. Like, I just need to go lie down. And your male boss is like, shrug, right? Like, that's awful. That's not something yeah. that he did to you. That's something he's denying you because he can't understand where you're coming from and that you have an ex- you have you have exigent circumstances that you need I mean that need immediate attention and relief, right? Mm-hmm. But when you like look at your situation, you have that same emotion, but a man did this to you, like I can't even imagine. I can't even mm-hmm. imagine. I can't mm-hmm. even like like the hatred she must feel. Like the hatred, yeah. the pure rage. And I mean she gets mad. Like she goes off. Like Cisco's like fucking ape shit. <laughs> like and I can't even be mad at her. Like I'm reading how like terrible she's being to Louis in the set, and I'm kind of like shrug. I mean, yeah, get God, Deserve. I guess. <laughs> you know? Literally, like, literally fucked around. Literally found out. I don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are we gonna say about it? Yeah, and Louis all like, yeah, she started pulling away from me. That kind of you sucks. don't say. I'm like yeah. <laughs> Then is like, can someone please like give me, can someone download me on how this happened? Like, can you give me information? And Lestat like laughs in her face. And I'm just like, that must yeah. just, I mean. Mm. The thing that was terrifying to me though is Claudia was like, 
So, like, could you tell me how to turn someone into a vampire? And I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to have her entire little (laughs) army. You know, like, she's going to make herself a five-year-old husband. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, just in a child's mind, she wants a boyfriend. She'll just make one, you know? Oh, my God. That's what I'm, like... She's stuck at five. I have a feeling she's going to make somebody else stuck at five so that they can be together once in like 50 years when the dude mentally ages up enough. But like, that's what I feel like is going to happen. You know what I mean? Well, it's like literal Lost Boys shit. Yeah. Yeah. Scary. I'm spooked. I was was stressed. Yeah. She was like, oh, how do you do that? I'm like, uh, don't tell her. Like, No. Well, I mean, what's good is that we've got fucking, like, brazen ass fucking, like, shitty shit Lestat who's like, mm-hmm. I'm not telling you anything. I don't have to tell you a word. It is yeah. mine to know. This is my power. I wield it however I want. No one else has this power. And she's like looking at Louie like, you're good with this. You're fine. Yeah. This is okay with you. You think this is okay? I think that I think that the moment that like really like turned my head <laughs> was that moment when she like questions Louis like in a serious way for the first time and Louis mm-hmm. is like taken aback by it because like he's been like going through the motions like like you said like he started like doing his whole like I guess I'll just like feed I guess I gotta kill people I'm gonna try mm-hmm. and leave him alive if I can't like he absolutely fucking like drinks the Kool Aid right he has his yeah. baby and he's like thrilled he has his daughter and he drinks the Kool Aid to like set a good be a good role model set you know good examples for her and blah 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 but like he hates every second of his life and she like looks at him and is like you're obviously miserable i know you hate this life why are you doing this like i'm half your age literally (laughs) in many ways more ways than one and i'm not putting Mm -hmm. up with this bullshit why are you sitting here like things are fine what's wrong Mm -hmm. with you (laughs) and i feel like everybody has that moment with their parent like eventually you get to an age where you're just like what are you doing to your parent about something um but this feels, this hits different. Like, this is very, like, she straight up looks him in his face and is like, what is, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you like this? It's so good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. And then Louis tells Claudia that he was the one who drank from her and that he basically killed her. But like, no, he didn't. I don't know why he like owns up to it when it's. Because he's a fucking know. martyr. That's why. For the exact reason she calls him out. Like, yeah. why are, why are you hiding behind this asshole? Like, he's a shithead. Like, he's a piece of shit. Like, do you not yep. notice that he's terrible? And Louis's like, I've literally known that he's been terrible this entire time. She's like, <laughs> what are you still doing here then? Like, yeah. Oh, I see. So he made me to trap you. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I still hate both of you. So <laughs> like, she's yeah. still like, like, she gives this whole tirade and like, yo, Oscar award winning performance for Claudia in this scene. Mm-hmm. Like she fucking tears him apart. Like she brutalizes him. And at the end, like Lestat's like, like Lestat is like everyone's shitty fucking dad. Like I swear to God, when yeah. somebody has a shitty dad, right. In any TV movie show, movie book, anything, right. Like when any, mm-hmm. whenever anybody has a really shitty dad, like this is Lestat. Can you talk to her, please? Like this is your fault. You did yeah. this. Why do I need to talk to her? You did this. Like, I drank from her. I felt bad about it. I could have been sitting here moping and being emo the rest of my life and it would Mm -hmm. have been fine. But instead, you decided to turn her into a vampire and now everyone's upset. I hope you're happy. Why doesn't anyone ever say this to Lestat? (laughs) We'll never know. Truly. Like, he doesn't have a chance to learn his lesson. I don't think he would anyway because he's terrible. But still, like, I mean, someone should have been, you know, on it. And fucking informed him of his his misdeeds because like dude is walking around like everything's fine and no yeah. one is happy like except for yep. that <laughs> and then we find out claudia is 65 at this point yes. too yes I, how exhausting can you imagine like i mean the only five benefit- years of people giving you wooden toys for your birthday oh here you go God. yeah the only nice here's part a book is about learning how to read part. yeah i guess but even yes. then, can you imagine like 65 years of walking as fast as a kid can walk because your legs are small? No. Yo, it would no. take forever to get everywhere. People are probably constantly trying to prey on you too. I imagine there's probably been a million times she's almost been kidnapped. Thank God she's a vampire. Like, yeah. 
And people always try to pick me up when make me so mad. Yes. Oh, look at you. Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Get away like, from me. <laughs> I know you probably experienced this too, but like having not straight hair, people always be like, can I touch your hair? And I'm like, if you touch my hair, I will break your hand. Get break away from your me. hand. Like that's the same. Touch- yeah. That's the same part. I'm sure Claudia has experienced multiple times is that people just assume she has no bodily autonomy because she looks like a child. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like when you think about it, it's like, honestly, a, like a genuine betrayal. Because she has no choice. She has no say in the matter. She can never fix it. She can never change it. All she can do is just literally accept her fate. Like, it's honestly the most selfish thing anybody could have really done. And, yeah. like, Louis feels bad that he drank from her. He feels bad that he, he almost killed her. Like, he was happy to see that she was still alive. Like, he mm-hmm. was like, oh, thank God. And, like, turned on his heel, like, ready to leave. Like, okay, well, she's alive anyway. Bye. And well, that's like, oh, no. It's not over yet. <laughs> he's like why, why though why Why are you like this why yeah. are you the way you are because i mean it would have still been awful if she was like 10 yeah but be less less awful yes only slightly less awful but still slightly like, less awful. five years old i feel like can you imagine 10... how people probably talk to her think about how you talk to a five-year-old like a five-year-old you're like you're maybe in kindergarten or pre-k so you're like Hello, my widow five-year-old. How are you doing today? To a 65-year-old vampire. You're trying to be nice and now your throat is ripped out and it's not your fault. So here's like my toxic thing is I don't talk to little kids like they're little kids. I've always just used the same voice with them. I just, cause I don't like to. Like I, Well, a lot I, of people say you shouldn't, that it's bad for development because they end yeah. up like keeping those things for far too long, some of them. That's interesting. So you're actually doing people favors. You're doing the Lord's work. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. it's it's just because I don't like talking to kids. But so I just like treat them like mini adults, and I'm like, yeah. you want to talk about your taxes, child? Taxes. <laughs> you know, like I. Uh... Nobody likes talking about taxes. If you do, I immediately don't trust you. Oh, I know. <laughs> See, here's my thing, though. It's like you. If you turn a Gen Z person into a vampire, you know how weird that's going to be? Listen, it'll be, it'll be a slog. <laughs> it'll be a slog. Louis, what do you mean I can't post my face online? Yeah, I don't have a reflection? Why would you do this to me? <laughs> yeah. Season of the first is going to hit worse. I can already feel it. Like, <laughs> Louis and Lestat would be killed off immediately. Yep. I would... Problematic st- behavior. <laughs> oh, I would strictly drink from terrible people. Yeah. Like, the scum of the earth. I'd be like, oh my god, I accidentally drank too much. What happened? So Go to weird. bars, dancing on, dance on the dance floor, having a really good time, fucking doing, like, the latest moves. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, cool. How do you feel about climate change? It's a rumor. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's oh, a dark over there. Do you want to hang out for a minute? or <laughs> Racist? Oh, oh, well... Oh man, let's let's head on outside. I gotta get something yeah. out of my trunk. Yeah, hold well, on. in my trunk. Spoiler yeah. alert: it's you. But come it's on, you. it's gonna be fun. Hey, you want to go back to your place? <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> just invite me does in. Any, <laughs> does anybody have any, any Molly? Does anybody have that? I need to put that in his drink so people think that I didn't do it. Is there a way <laughs> to like disguise? No, PC. Is there a drug of some kind anyone has here? No, we're we're clean these days. Well, <sighs> that's fine. It's okay. I'll come up with something. You guys stuck to your dare petitions? <sighs> what town are we in? Where am I at? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah, no. Amazing. Amazing. No It'd be that one girl, too. It'd be that one girl, too, that's like at the bar and she's like, don't go home with him. He's a terrible person. I'd be like, girl, I know. <laughs> Read the newspaper tomorrow. Don't worry about it. So I got you. I like you. I like you. We're going to go out more. But like, don't, don't tell anyone me. I was here. <laughs> you didn't see me. Yeah. Go exclusively to Burning Man. Yo, Every... fucking Ge- Gen Z vampires probably have like fucking 3.5 million followers on fucking Instagram, Twitter, and fucking TikTok, dude. Because like oh, yeah. every video is just like hypnosis. You like me. I know you're looking at me and you think I look plain, but something about me is really drawing me to you. So go ahead and uh, follow me and, uh, you know, smash that like button. 
Smash that like button. <laughs> I would have I would heavily think it's like makeup influencers would be secret vampires. Hell yes. Hell you know? yes. <laughs> Definitely. That and like those like Twitch gamers that don't ever go to cons mm-hmm. or don't do face reveals. Yeah. Are probably but, vampires. Especially the ones that go like 24 or 48 hours at a time and shit. Yeah. Yeah. The They're like, oh. Yeah. They're just like, oh yeah, another 48 hour live stream. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> How are you alive? Yeah. Don't ask questions. That's all I'm alive. <laughs> 48 hours is about the time I can go without drinking from another person, you know. <laughs> By then, I'll have a follower on my doorstep. Go ahead, swap me. See what happens. Yeah, see what happens. <laughs> I will say, now that they have those like voice changing mods, it's becoming easier and easier to become an influencer vampire. True. Without a doubt. Very have you true. seen that guy on TikTok that makes it sound like he's a little kid in Call of Duty lobbies? No. Oh my god. It is my favorite thing. I feel like that has a mass- like massive potential to just go horribly wrong probably but yeah he'll like I, i'll send it to you because he pops up like daily on my tiktok but he just like pretends to be a little boy and he'll be like all right guys we're gonna get this i'm gonna carry this team to the win and he just sounds like a 12 year old and it's so funny because all the other people in the call of duty lobby i'll be like did this kid really just say he was gonna carry us to a win or like when because now there's like you can hear the people's mic when they kill you uh-huh. So, in Call of Duty. So he'll kill someone in the game. He's like, all right, let's go. Another headshot, baby. And he sounds like a 12-year-old. And people get so <laughs> mad. So mad. It's You're not even so supposed funny. to be playing this game. Where are your yeah. parents? Or he'll be like, you know, he'll win. He'll be like, mom! Mom! Mom, I won! Mom! And it's <laughs> so funny. So funny. Oh, my God. People yeah, will send be it fucking to you. livid. <laughs> oh my god and he's like an, an adult he's just an adult with a voice changer and it's so good it's my That's favorite hilarious. i love it yeah or <laughs> he'll like pressure people on the internet like it basically he'll like say things and to make you know people bring out their parenting clothes mm-hmm. like their parenting hats and they'll <laughs> he'll like he'll be like i'll send you five dollars if you let me be on your team and he goes kid uh, the teammates will be like kid don't no don't send people on the internet money like don't do that that's not the way that's not the way <laughs> yo that would be me that would be me yeah. i'd be like time out where's your mom yeah i need i need to have i need to have a conversation with her please put her on the phone yeah no, no no seriously it's for your best interest okay <laughs> it's so good. i'd be that person i would fall mm-hmm. for it 100 percent. i don't even like children which is why it's important that you hear this from me okay yeah literally <laughs> i saw um also, have you seen the VR Among Us? Really quick before we go back into the no. story. VR Among Us is, a, you know how like normal Among Us has a lot of children on it? Yes. In like the open lobbies. VR Among Us is the same problem. Um, so there was this guy. There's two different situations I'm going to tell you about really quick. The first one, this guy um, basically was like trying to teach this little girl a lesson. And he goes, okay, what's your home address? She tells him and he goes, never do that again. Never do that again. Are you kidding me? Don't do that. That's He's terrible. Like, yeah. Because he was like trying to make sure that like she wouldn't do it, you know? Yeah. Like this, I think this guy was like also a parent. And he was like, Yeah. Yeah, don't do that again. Holy don't shit. Don't do that. That's terrifying. Uh huh. He goes, oh, someone's gonna end up really. at your house. That's scary. Because this kid was like five, six, maybe, wow. like little, little kid. It's a terrible then, time to be a parent. Yeah. And then it said, there was another video I saw where this guy chased a child in VR as the Among Us character. He goes, yeah, I'm the imposter. I'm going to kill you. And he's like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to like chasing this child and try to keep oh my the God. kids out of the V. Well, it's like, it's not an on like seven year old should not be an open online games. So that's a terrible idea. You know? Anything that's a lack of understanding. That's a lack of understanding from their parent. Gotta be. It like, has to be. I had the internet when I was in fifth and sixth grade. Mm-hmm. I'm an elder millennial. Um, mm-hmm. And like 
my dad loved computer. Both my dads loved computers. My my stepdad and my biological dad. So like I had computers in every home that I was in, pretty much mm -hmm. from the time that I was like in fourth grade, which was way ahead of the time for a lot of people. Like a lot of people only had computers until like computers at school only until they were like in seventh eighth grade that are my same age. So like. I was an early adopter of AOL and yeah. chat rooms and like my parents watched me like a fucking hawk, like a hawk. Mm -hmm. There was one time I talked to somebody that I wasn't supposed to be talking to and my mom like found the conversation and like flayed me alive verbally. Like it was rough. I was grounded for like 7,000 weeks. It was terrible, right? Like yeah. I learned the hell out of my lesson and never made that mistake again. Mm -hmm. The idea that people are allowing their child like into spaces that are even less like responsive like that yeah. that, are, that have more people in them because like the, like when i used to be in chat rooms and stuff like that like teen you know in sync fan club chat room right when i was in those it, there were maybe like 300 people in it it wasn't like there are a thousand people trying to get into one server of this entire call of duty franchise right now right mm -hmm. like there are a million servers like it wasn't even that big like back then and it was scary as hell so like i can't even fucking imagine especially because yeah. there's now software to, like you said, like that guy can pretend he's 12. How many people are out there with software and making it sound like they're 12 to other 12 year olds? Yeah. Like, and I just, you could use your power for evil. Easy. I know. Oh and my I God. I just don't understand. Cause it's like, you got to think these people's, these kids' parents are definitely like max, max elder millennials, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause like Gen X is like what? 50. Mm-hmm. They're not having kids. Well, the, those, men, those men are still having kids. Let's be real. Yeah, they're men. I well, <laughs> yeah, know. But, like, I call my parents a boomer. I think my dad's Gen X, actually. I don't tell him I said that. Um, yeah. If he's but, under 55 or 50, then he's a he's Gen like 56. X. 56. Yeah, that's like Gen X. Okay. Because, like... Boomers are, like, 60. That's, like, 60. Yeah, like, because my mom is, like, a baby baby boomer my mom yeah. was born in 60 60 is like not quite a boomer i think dan's um, mom's baby boomer too then yeah like my mom is like barely gen x at 1960 okay. i feel like gen x is like anybody who because like there's there's also a generation in the middle of baby boomers and gen x as well that nobody ever talks about and that's like the generation my mom is in because baby boomers like the boom came from people coming back from like war like from world war ii Mm -hmm. and shit so baby boomers are like jason's parents like people that were born in like 1940s 1950s mm. um 1960 to 1970 mm. like anybody who was like a teenager in the 90s that's gen x so like if, if okay. it's 1992 and you're in you're in your senior year of high school that's gen x like if you were old enough to go see nirvana as a concert you're gen x if you are like janine garofalo and you watch daria when you were in college <laughs> right like that's gen x yeah and i feel like my mom my mom was 24 when she had me in 84 so like she's like right before gen x i'd mm -hmm. say i feel like people yeah. born in the 70s are gen x back to the book either way <laughs> so um i will say there is some weird stuff in this moment about uh louis being like a lover to yeah. Claudia and I was like I don't know if that's just you know supposed to be a different definition yeah I think it's like romantic like it. language lover not like, like sex it. lover yeah it's so I admit that line is also in the movie mm. I don't know if, if you wanted to watch the movie as Probably. part of this uh this review here this analysis but mm -hmm. there's definitely a part where Kirsten Dunst looks at Brad Pitt baby Brad Pitt in his face and is like a lover and i'm just like ooh. as a kid i was like ooh, i get it i'm also 12 and i get yeah. why you would want him as your lover because he's fine right but mm -hmm. like older adult candace is like mm, no <laughs> yeah back when you're 12 you think lover just means Maybe sometimes not. you look into your eyes each other each other's eyes yeah. a little bit you know? yeah and it gets romantic and you hold hands and you blush a little bit no mm -hmm. that's not that's not yeah it. <laughs> yeah i was like okay no um but claudia finally pushes louis to leaving um and she's like we're gonna get a boat and we're gonna go to europe and it's gonna be great yep we're gonna find is, out about our ancestors yeah mm -hmm. but she she's from nola right like she's 
she wants to find out about her vampire ancestors. Okay. Because she's like, I don't understand what this is. He, yeah. Lestat is a fucking idiot. Like, I love it. She's like, look at him. He's a fucking idiot. Clearly, he doesn't know anything about anything. Why do we trust yeah. him? He's a fucking fool. Like, we mm-hmm. need to just go out on our own, strike our own fucking, forge our own path, and just leave. And Louis is like, yeah. you can't be free of him. I've tried. Trust me. I've worked yeah. hard. I've tried killing myself. I've tried going out in daytime. I've tried ignoring him. I've tried moving to a different plantation. None of those things rid me of this man. Okay? He's never going. He's like the Cat Came Back song the very next day. Like, Mm -hmm. he will never leave, right? We will never be free of him. And she's like, oh, bet. We won't be free of him? Challenge accepted. And she's like, damn. And I'm like, (laughs) I didn't think this could get worse. And yet here we are. Literally. (laughs) Yeah. So Claudia's like, hey, Lestat, who turned you? And Lestat's like looking at Claudia. He's like, why why are you asking me that? None of your business. (laughs) Yeah. That's me and a personal problem. So. (laughs) And then I like the idea that Claudia's like just swinging her little legs and like mouths to Louis and is like, we should just kill him. (laughs) (laughs) That's the only way we're going to be free. All right. It's going to be quick. It'll be painless in and out. And then we'll get yeah. on the boat. Okay. That's the plan. And Louis's like, why is everyone always making plans without me? And then and making me do them with them. I'm really tired of being a fucking pawn in this great epic battle that I'm not even in. Yeah. Like, Louis. That's all like, he is. He is a pawn. Yep. He has no backbone. He's, None. You know, he's one of those people where it's like, you know how there's the whole analogy that people are either leaders or followers. Yeah, he's definitely, like, barely even a follower. He's like a goat with the boat. If the boat's sailing away, I guess I'm following. Like, <laughs> like a toddler with a leash. He's going with you. <laughs> Wherever you go. <laughs> I saw a toddler with a leash at the mall yesterday, and it gave me so much joy. This kid was <laughs> losing, losing their mind with the leash on, just like... She had to pick this kid up, you know? And yeah. Ugh, toddlers with leashes are my favorite thing. I think it's hilarious every time I see one, especially when they got the bungee capability, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, yep. like, it gets to a certain point and they're screaming at the end of the leash. I think it's <laughs> hilarious. And especially when they can't figure out how to take the leash off. Wow. Even more joy. I don't yeah. know who invented toddler leashes. It's but I think time, it's though. so funny. I do. Yeah. I really think it's funny. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're just like holding this kid by the leash and you're like yanking him back. Agree. Joy. So much. Mm-hmm. Pure joy. Anyways. So Louis knows that Claudia is going to kill the stats tonight. So uh, Louis is just like, yeah, so we're going to like go to Europe, I guess. And I'm like, why would you even tell him? Why would you tell him? <laughs> because he's fucking like, like there's, there's a very serious love hate relationship. I don't think that there is a love hate relationship as strong as this one in like mm-hmm. any other modern novel that I think I've read. Like this yeah. is like the very definition of like, I fucking hate you, but I can't live without you. Like he's like. So I fucking hate you. Lestat's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. what's new? He goes, well, what's new is I'm leaving you forever, you bitch. Ever. I'm going with our child. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. We find out that ba- Babette apparently died young because people said she was insane. and She died because she turned crazy. And I'm like, well, that's your mm-hmm. fault. It 110% is. Yeah. And Louis's like, I kind of feel bad. Yeah. You, <laughs> you should. should. <laughs> you turn this woman insane you should feel bad about it i mean he did try to do the right thing he was like yo girl boss girl boss until you're you know until you're fucking dead because they're gonna make fun of you because you're a lady and mm-hmm. like she did that but then like he decided to come back to her house which was the beginning of the end if he had yeah. just left her alone she would have thrived yeah she would have been fine she would have done great they would have written history she would have grown her. up to be yep she would have grown up to be a super racist old white lady that has a bunch of money Mm-hmm. She'd essentially be Paula Deen these days. <laughs> That's what yep. she would be. People would be like, "Look at her, ahead of her time." Truly, 
I forgot Paula Deen's racist. I kind of forgot Paula Deen existed. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, me too. But then I'll go to the grocery store and I'll see like some white lady magazine with Paula Deen on the cover. And I'm like, really? She's the one that sure? said a slur, right? Yeah. So she said a bunch of them. She oh. said uh, she called people that worked for her the N word and like a private conversation that wasn't oh. that private. And then like other people were like basically bandwagon and were like, yeah, we've heard her use that term like multiple times. Mm. And she was like, no, I'm sorry. I come from a different generation. Like I will say she got incredibly, old, right? I mean, she's like 65. Like she's a boomer. Like she's not oh, ancient. Okay. She's not like a hundred. She's like 80, maybe maximum between 60 and 80. Mm-hmm. But she like, she's very, um, she did the whole apologizing thing. She's like, I have people of all races working for me. And people are like, that's not the flex you think it is. Yeah. Um, and so like, she went away for like five minutes, but it was before it was when Barack Obama, I think was still president. Like it was before mm-hmm. Donald Trump and mm-hmm. our current state of things. So mm-hmm. it was back when people were like, well, if you're apologetic enough, I guess we'll give you another shot. It's not like today where it's like, we can't be, you can't be trusted. Yeah. <laughs> We can't trust you to have another shot because you might fuck it up. So instead, we're just going to collectively decide that you don't really exist anymore. Bye. Is it Martha Stewart that like hangs out with Snoop Dogg and their homies? Correct. Didn't she go to jail or something? Like She sure did for insider trading. Oh. Yeah. Because I, I felt like the her hanging out with Snoop Dogg all the time was supposed to be like an apology to her, but I don't remember what for. So her hanging out with Snoop Dogg happened when she was trying to get back into the public eye because people judged her really harshly, especially because mm-hmm. she didn't go to like real jail. She went to like rich white lady jail where they like uh... eat yogurt parfait for lunch and shit. Like it was like a fancy jail where yeah. you like are outside in the sun. You can like tan and stuff. Um, it was one of those. So, but she did her time. Like she did a, she did a bullshit thing and she went to a bullshit jail, right? Like no surprise mm-hmm. there. So then, like, Snoop Dogg was like, yo, why are people shit-talking Martha Stewart? Like, she went to jail. Like, she did her time. Like, why are people saying shit about her still? Yeah. So her and Snoop Dogg became friends because of that. Because he was like, listen, like, reform. <laughs> like, Yeah. And I think they did, like, a com- they were, like, cast in, like, a commercial together or something mm-hmm. like that for, like, unexpected pairings. And, um, and they, like, stayed friends. Like, they're still friends. Like, they still chill. And, like, yeah. Martha Stewart's like, yeah, I've smoked with Snoop Dogg. It's not really my thing. Like, I haven't smoked weed in a long time. It doesn't really do much for me. But, like, I appreciate that he does. And, like, they, they genuinely chill. Like, they genuinely yeah. hang out and, like, bacon shit. I, 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 like, couldn't remember what she did. I just remember that, like, whatever them becoming, like, her becoming, going on her apology to her, led them yeah. to have, like, a genuine friendship. And I, it was, yeah. I love it. I don't know why. To this day. It's yeah. beautiful. Like, they had that whole cookbook. Yeah. Together. And, like, that TV it's show. Lovely. What was that TV? Yeah, it's really cute. It was cute. a pun. I don't remember what it's called, though. It's like smoking something. Yeah, I can't remember. But, like, it's it's really charming, yeah. though, their relationship. Their friendship. I think it's adorable. Not even gonna lie. Yeah. I don't even... I don't... Sometimes I don't know how we spiral to the point <laughs> that we get to. We but... were talking about how Babette would be Paula Deen. And then oh, from Paula Deen to Martha yes. Stewart. Okay. Yeah. I was like, how do we get here? <laughs> Is there a map? Um, yeah. But yeah, Babette, Babette dies. It's absolutely Louis' fault. Mm-hmm. And then Louis is just like, I'm going to tell Lestat about all of my inner working plans so yeah. that he'll, he'll be jealous. And Lestat's like, you're not leaving me. Yeah, Even if you go to Europe, funny. I'm going to come with you. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? It, <laughs> he's like, Louis does that whole thing with like villain monologuing. <laughs> yep. Let me reveal my entire plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and then Claudia's like, you know what? One last time, I'm going to try and make some peace with Lestat. Maybe we don't have to kill him. Maybe we can just leave. So, then... But, like, okay, that wasn't even true. It was a cover. So, she brought two little boys in. She goes, I brought you a present. And I thought this was going to be her villain origin story turning one of these boys into a little vampire. Yeah. Incorrect. Incorrect. Uh, yeah, so she poisons Lestat with, like, the blood of this. She lets him choose. She's like, yeah, whichever one you want, and I'll have the other one. You know, this will be great he's for like, us. He's, but he's, like, ready to go in on both. He's like, ooh, yeah. for me. Like, he's already greedy, like, out the gate. Like, yeah. finding out it's a trick, like, you don't even feel bad. Because you're just like, that's too fucking good. <laughs> you know what really? I mean? Like, maybe you should have been a greedy bitch. Like, maybe this wouldn't be happening to you. I know. Fucking laudanum. 
I did not know that laudanum would keep your body warm longer after you're dead. That's nuts. I didn't know anything about it. I'd never heard the word before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So laudanum is something like in small doses. Mm-hmm. Um, in small doses, people used to use laudanum like medically, like, in, like to knock people out and stuff like that. But like, it doesn't take much to just like absolutely destroy you. Um, so like, that's what she does. She just like poisons these kids, makes them look like they're alive. And he fucking goes to town. Yeah. Embarrassing. I love that she poisoned them both. Like, you remember in The Princess Bride when he poisons both the cops and he's like, I should keep myself immune. Yes. Yeah. Same energy. (laughs) You know, like, very much same energy. Yes. And he's so mad. He looks at Louis and is like, Can you do something about her? And Louis's like, I didn't know this was happening. What? Yeah, he's like, What? You didn't tell me you were doing this? Claudia's like, No, because you're fucking tattletale. You would have mojo jojo this entire plan, and then he wouldn't have Absolutely. drank the fucking children's blood. So no, which is not a fact. <laughs> and then, yeah, so his body shrivels up, and I'm like, that's disgusting. Yeah, it's horrible. It, do they do that on camera? It's a bad look. Do you see it on camera? What like, do they do? They do that in the movie? Do they shrivel the body? Oh yeah, yeah. No. It's actually pretty. It's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie to you. It's pretty awesome. So like, it's like, it's nineties. So it's not like the perfect C- It's not perfect CGI. Mm-hmm. Um, they do it. They do it. Actually. There's a, there's two different versions of it. One version of it is when Claudia turns into a vampire, they do like a pan. They start like at the back of her head kind of, and they pan around as she's like breathing. She's like freaking out. And she's like having this moment where she's like clutching to Lestat's arm. It's very dramatic and scary. So she's like drinking from him and he like pulls away from her finally and is like, get off me. Like you can't. And like flies away from her. And so she's still like freaking out. And you can see like, it's totally like Kirsten Dunst, but a baby, but like, she's like freaking out and her hair is all like dull and like mousy brown and straight and like scraggly looking. And her skin Mm -hmm. is like really dirty and she looks really filthy. And she's got like, like mottled skin and stuff. And basically what they do is as the camera kind of does this semicircle pan around her face, you see her hair get lighter, get curlier. And then like her skin gets very, very fair and her teeth grow. Like it all kind of happens like in one motion. So basically when this happens with Lestat, it's like the opposite where they're like zooming in on him as he's like, like falling apart, essentially. Like he drinks from the boys. He's like, what the fuck is happening here? Why would you do this to me? He goes to get Claudia to try to like, like, like hurt her and harm her. Mm -hmm. But as he's like reaching out to her, he starts like feeling the effects and you can see his skin get like dark. And like very heavy and like kind of like almost like all the blood is like sinking to the bottom of his face and his eyes like cloud over. It's really disgusting. It's fantastic though. It's really great. It's really gross, but it's awesome. I can't wait to watch the TV show. Same. (sighs) I don't even know what they're going to do because I think like, again, I think we talked about this briefly in our first episode, but like, um, I'm pretty sure that they're trying to make an Anne Rice multiverse. Because mm-hmm. her her series, uh, the the witch books, Witching Hour and Taltos, and uh, there's one that begins with an L, Lasher, mm-hmm. all three of those are in the same universe with the Vampire Chronicles. So I don't know if after this season, like I don't even know how far they go. If this season is like the beginning and end of the whole thing, or if this is just like the first part of this book, like I don't know how far they go in this yeah. show. And I don't know if they're going to have sequels. Like, if they're going to do the Vampire Lestat next as a show, or what's up. But, like, I'm very excited to watch that. We could have an entire Anne Rice podcast, probably. Absolutely. There's so much material. I don't know that we'd be able to get through it, because some of it is really just slow. Some of it's not the most exciting. Like, it takes a lot of patience, I think, to read Anne Rice. Kind of like Stephen King, because there's just, like, like in the witching hour, that book is like a bajillion pages long. Like the paperback is even thicker than this one. It's like nuts. Mm-hmm. And when you read it, like they're talking about this house that the Mayfair witches live in. Mm-hmm. And it's like 15 pages just on the house. Like it's, oh God. I'm exaggerating, but it's yeah. like, it's like multiple pages where they're still just talking about this fucking house. Like someone's standing outside the house and they're describing the house and it's like half your life. So <laughs> I'm definitely down to try another book with you to see if you're into it. But if you are not into it, I will not be surprised nor hold it against you. Fair. Okay. Fair. <laughs> so 
they decide that the best way to handle the entire problem is just by throwing Lestat's body in the swamp, which to me is a terrible idea because the whole thing is his body gets dehydrated. So you would think, yeah, let's continue that. Let's not throw it in a body of water. Not smart. So now like it's fine that he's in a body of water because you know that he needs blood to survive but like it's mm-hmm. not as though swamps have no animals in them so that's I'm... my problem like I'm... now that i live in florida especially i'm like that is mm-hmm. the worst place to put someone who's a vampire like he will be just fine mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're assuming that you know that fully took care of him i would not assume that no i would have thrown him in a fire and then taking the ashes to multiple clandestine locations. Yep. I really hope... I use clandestine a lot. I'm really hoping it means what I think it is. I think it means. I probably should Google that later. Because I've only ever heard the word. I've never looked it up. Which word? Clandestine. Oh, clandestine. Yeah. So that's like undercover of darkness. Top secret. Okay, clandestine. good. Excellent. I use that word correctly then. I just, Mm -hmm. I use it a lot, like in my daily speech. And now I'm like, I've never actually looked it up to confirm that this means what I think it is. I watched too many like little CIA CIA shows when I was a kid. And now it's, yeah, it's become a part of my everyday vocabulary. (laughs) So yeah, Louis cannot stand Claudia at this point, which. Yeah, he's super upset. He feels very betrayed and lied to, which like. You're part of the reason she's a vampire, so you should probably just, like, chill out, because it's not a cute look to be upset that somebody is mad about something that you did to them. Literally. (laughs) Claudia is bawling her eyes out. Again, fair. Well, because she, like, doesn't want him to hate her. She's like, yo, you're all I have left now. Can you, like, (laughs) stop being this way with me? Like, but then, like, part of her acknowledges, like, I guess this is why Lestat was the way he was with you, and I'm like... I mean, I can't really blame her though, because like, no, know, not at all. She's not trying to move on. She's like, we got a boat to catch, places to be. Come on, let's go, let's move. You know? Yeah. And then Louis's like, you know what? I'll forgive you. Which again, I don't really feel like she did anything wrong here. You know, there was a problem. No. She fixes the problem, and you're upset with her. Like for what reason? None. Zero reason. Yeah, and then Louis decides to go to the cathedral, which was weird. Poor um, choices all around. Yeah. <laughs> they start having like this weird fever dream about the end of the world out of the blue. Mm-hmm. He decides to handle this by going into a confessional and talking to a priest. And then the priest was like, um, I don't think your brother was really a saint. And he goes, don't talk about my brother like that and drinks yeah. his blood. <laughs> And I was like, a lot and happened. You're like, you're like, bro, your brother has been dead for like fucking over half a century. Like yeah. at this point, what more is there to say? Well, your brother's been dead probably at least a hundred years. Yeah. Like what more is there to talk about? What more is there to be mad about? Like, why are you throwing these temper tantrums? Yeah. Just calm down. Yeah. Cause like you have to assume we know Claudia is 65. So it's been at least yeah. 60 years since they turned Claudia. And yep. I'm assuming they did not turn her the f- second they got to know new orleans you know i don't think it was like the first year like i think they were in new orleans for a while yep and they were on that plantation mm-hmm. probably 10 years mm-hmm. at least mm-hmm. so yeah it had to have been close to 100 years right yeah i'd say between 80 and 100 yeah mm-hmm. wild and he's still like, I mean, I guess you don't ever like really forget your family dying, but you know. I feel like it's because he feels such guilt Probably. at not believing his brother, especially like knowing that like when he, like earlier in the book, when he's like talking to people about his brother and he's trying to like cope with that, like before he's like truly a vampire, or like right as he becomes a vampire, mm-hmm. like part of the guilt that he feels is like a lack of belief finding out that there are vampires it's if he's a vampire it was totally it could have totally been real that his brother was a saint right that his brother was having these visions because like he didn't believe in the supernatural so he just thought oh my brother is just so plain and so simple and i'm so plain and so simple Mm -hmm. nothing crazy or amazing could happen to us and then something crazy and amazing happens to him and he's like oh fuck like maybe i should have so he's carrying that weight around with him for forever Mm -hmm. And I feel like what really sets him off too is that like his brother was blonde 
And like, he remembers like seeing his brother's like broken body at the bottom of those steps. And then he looks at Lestat after Claudia kills him. And he's like, he like sees it all over again. Like again, my brother, again, blonde, again, like, you know what I mean? Like he has this like flashback and like gets all in his fucking head about it. And like, as hard as it is for Claudia to just like not know humanity, I feel like it's just as equally hard for Louis to have this humanity weighing on him because like those memories are memories that should have slipped, slipped you know, by the way, like forever ago, like when we meet Lestat, like he has his father that's he, that he's tethered to. That's a piece of his actual humanity. And it does not keep him from being himself. It doesn't keep Mm -hmm. him from being a vampire, from being a predator, right? Like he's not held by that past. And Louis is held by a ghost. Like he's not even held by a real person. You know what I'm saying? Like held back by a real person. So Mm -hmm. like, it's just interesting to me. I feel like because this is part one, Mm-hmm. I'm more patient. If this were another book and this was just like halfway through the book, I'd be so annoyed right now because I'd know there wasn't enough time yeah. for me to find out more information of like how he finally like sloughs off that outer layer of like his humanity. Mm-hmm. Because like at some point he had to have like made some kind of sacrifice or some kind of like reconciliation with those feelings or he wouldn't be sitting in front of this boy having the interview. And like that's one of the things that I find so compelling about this book is that like there are moments when you're so whisked away and wrapped up in this book that you forget that he is legit talking to somebody in like yeah. whatever day and age that this is, right? If we're expecting to believe, if we're expected to believe that it's when the book was published, it's like late 70s, early 80s, like this vampire is just chilling with this guy in a room and has not eaten him over the past seven hours that he's been sitting here giving his testimony. So like, you know, something must have happened if he's not still like crippled by this, like, you know, this these bits of humanity and existential dread. And he's also not like, completely feral where he like can't be around a human without wanting to drink from them right but mm-hmm. like it's like the slowest burn you're like where are you going like how could you get out of this now like even claudia like claudia kills Lestat, and like every page turn is just like what the fuck could happen next yeah like, what could we where do we go from here right like <laughs> mm-hmm. i can't wait to read part two i'm so excited oh my god what a way to end part one though like yeah yeah so basically they decide to go to Europe. No, well, not decide. They've been decided, but it's like they're more moving the process. They're packing up their bags. They're like, all right, we're right. going to go. Um, and there there was this boy. I forgot to have a write in my notes because I didn't think he mattered. But yeah, this boy Lestat was hanging out with all the time. And it seems like Lestat was kind of using him as a blood bank in a way. Mm-hmm. Like it was a weird yeah. relationship between the two of them. And then um the the guy like follows claudia home he's like where's mm-hmm. he at where is he at tell me where he is and claudia's like he's gone he's on vacation he's on a business mm-hmm. meeting <laughs> um and turns out vamp or the musician boy is a vampire now mm-hmm. the stat found is came back to life turned mm-hmm. that kid into a vampire uh and now He's like ready to enact his revenge on Claudia mm-hmm. and Louis. Yep. So Louis tries to light the stat on fire. Doesn't really seem to work. No. The entire house goes up in flames. Like Louis grabs Claudia. They're just running out of there. Um, and that's the cliffhanger we have to mm-hmm. end part one on. And I was so mad when we did this recording <laughs> like we did the first recording because i wanted to read the part two but then like i realized it was gonna take us a while to get through part one so yeah. i've just been sitting with this cliffhanger and this yep. vision of them just like sprinting straight out of this building for weeks weeks yep in my mind i like think back to like the 1800s and like early 1900s and how many like weird fires there were like all over the country Mm -hmm. like there was just like a random fire where this whole like block was burned down and in my mind i'm like how many of those were vampires fleeing their masters how Mm -hmm. many like you know what i mean like is that how all great fires start somebody is trying to uh, like obscure evidence of something of some misdeed or wrongdoing because that's how it feels (laughs) honestly though like being a book kid and reading about the supernatural from a very like young informative age there's a lot of times where it's like you learn about history and you're like hmm so you're telling me you want me to believe that all that just like happened to happen something spontaneously combusted 
and there was no vampires involved. And okay. people were fine with it. They yeah. just accepted that this just happened and it was okay. I don't yeah. think so. I'm like, hmm. I call bullshit on that. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> and people think you're all crazy for being like, oh, that seems like weird and kind of supernatural. And they're like, supernatural doesn't exist. And I'm like, okay, can you just like play in space for five minutes? Because that's it. Your life's kind of boring if you really just want to turn down the fact <laughs> that, you know, you're going to just believe that lightning happened to strike possibly this area on a clear and not stormy night and lit the whole place on fire. And you're telling me you believe that over anything else? Okay. All right. You know yeah. what? Go off. Go yeah. off. That's fine. <laughs> Live your life, man. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Whatever. Go for it. Yeah. Or it's like people who adamantly don't believe in the Fae and they're like, I'll just like kick this mushroom circle. I'm like, what if you just didn't? Just on the off chance. On the off chance that... Just leave it alone. Yeah, that all of that's real. <laughs> Why would you want to, like, run that risk? That's how horror movies start. Okay. I mean, I was in an argument with somebody in college about magical creatures. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's no way of knowing. We haven't explored every single surface of this earth yet, right? Like, mm -hmm. we haven't explored space. We haven't explored the depths of the deepest depths of the ocean. Yeah. There's, like, a lot of things that we still don't know, right? Like... And it's, and it's within the realm of reason, right? Like fairies, for example. Like, is do I believe that fairies exist? I don't know. I can't say one way or the other, yeah. right? But I do think that, like, at one point, there was a certain kind of magic on this earth. Even if the magic was, is what we now know as science, mm -hmm. those people believed it was magic. And because they believed it was magic, it was therefore magical, right? So yeah. I was in college. I was arguing with somebody. This guy was a neuroscientist. And he, like, thought he was, like, just the most brilliant person in the world. And um, And, like, he was. He was super smart. But, like... He was not the end all be all. Mm -hmm. And like we were talking one night and like I had mentioned that I think that mermaids exist. And he was like, what are you talking about? Mermaids do not exist. That's the most ludicrous thing anyone's ever fucking said. You believe fairies exist? I'm like, well, I mean, there's like areas in Scotland that like people haven't been to areas in Iceland that like people have traversed. Sure. But like yeah. no one's there like day to day. Right. Like mm -hmm. I absolutely believe that there are probably like things that we don't understand and we can't know. Mm -hmm. that live in those spaces right because there's nobody there like why wouldn't it be able to thrive there right like mm -hmm. we just don't know about it and he was like that's like saying giant squid exists you're being fucking crazy and i'm like they giant could. squid do exist though and he's like no they don't i'm like well they could he's like what like robert louis stevenson like 30 fucking 40 50 feet giant squid mm -hmm. that's impossible i was like okay and then like two weeks later they found the first giant squid <laughs> oh. and it was like all over animal planet and I remember going back to like a house party, like like a year later, like, hey, remember when you said giant squid don't exist? He was like, don't talk to me about it. Okay. It's a fluke. I'm like, <laughs> it's not a fluke though. Yeah. It's just something that we didn't think was possible until it was. The well, depths of the ocean. You're not going to tell me at the bottom of the ocean. Now, do I think they look like Ariel? No. No. Do I think that they look like pale, weird creatures that have like long limbs and like pallid skin and they're fucking scary? Absolutely. I do. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they're like beautiful looking. I think they look like angler fish people. Yeah. That's what I think they look like because they live down there. But the other thing too is like you're telling me you think that we're the only like intelligent species in the entire world. Like fairies could exist, but they are probably aliens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. everything it's gonna evolve differently to survive on whatever planet it's from. Well, I mean, it's also like our brains as well. Like mm -hmm. people have studied, you know, the human brain and there are path like neurological pathways that a lot of us don't even use. Like there's parts of our brains that like no one ever accesses because we have no reason to do so. Mm -hmm. But to me, I'm like, what if that unlocks dimensions? Because yeah. like we already know that the way space and time and physics works, right? That there are dimensions, right? Th three dimensional things occur because of physics, right? Because of the way that we understand, I think it's physics. Because of the way that we understand mm -hmm. like, like 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 spatial recognition and things like that right so mm -hmm. if there's a spot in our brain that could understand a fourth dimension we don't mm -hmm. know what the fuck's going on right like i look at my cat all the time and i'm like i wonder if you can see fourth dimensions like if there are people that used to live here or people that are like otherwise invisible because they're operating in a different at a, maybe at a different frequency or in a different dimension like i wonder if cats can see that which is why cats are always looking at stuff and we're like what the fuck are you looking at you're being real fucking creepy right now yeah and maybe they're not being creepy maybe they can just see the ghost that's over your shoulder right like 
I don't know. You know what I mean? Like anything could really happen. Like, and I think that ruling things out like that, when like, instead of being like, there's no way we can know everything to me, one is hubris and one is reality, right? Mm -hmm. Like reality is there's no way we could know everything. Mm -hmm. There's just no way, right? There's just certain things that we're just not going to know. And we're just going to have to be okay with that. Right. Like people dying of paper cuts. I'm sure people were like witchcraft when someone Mm -hmm. would get over a paper cut. Right. They'd be like, how did you stay alive? Someone nursed you. You used a saline solution. What is that? Witchcraft, right? It's just salt and water, man. No, it's witchcraft is what it is. Right. Like people were burned alive for that shit one, one day, like back in the day, like Mm -hmm. you can't to, to act like there's not going to be any new discoveries just puts us at, at, at pretty much zero. Right. Like, we're not in the black, we're not in the red, like we're just at neutral because there's nothing, there's nothing more to discover mm-hmm. at that point. So to me, I'm like the people that want to insist that all that stuff is fanciful and it's fairy tales and it doesn't exist. I'm just like, that's somebody who doesn't have the healthy curiosity about the world around them because it's absolutely possible. Like scientists recently found out that water can store information. Like that's some fucking like, yeah. you can store, you can make a water computer one day, maybe like, that's bananas to me that you can store memories yeah. and data in water. Like that's, that's insane. like, that's crazy. Go back to 1960. Tell somebody that they'll punch you in your yeah, face. Right? No. Like, like, okay. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> what are you saying? Right. So like, that's what, rally that's what I mean. that down for Yo, like, <laughs> honestly, like even like, yeah, for like legilimens. So like, that's what I'm saying. Even like something as simple as like a talking stream, right. A talk, a babbling brook that like talks to people. Mm-hmm. In my head, I'm like, okay, so you're a poor villager. You have no public education whatsoever. It's 1600 AD, right? Mm-hmm. You're strolling through a forest. You're picking some berries and some truffles, right? You're doing your daily tasks and you hear a voice and you look over to the stream and you realize that you're alone in this forest and nothing could be talking to you, but you hear language, right? You hear speech. Like in my head, I'm like, okay, was well, that just early days of, of water holding memories? Like, Was that some kind of like scientific reaction that happened that created that incidence Mm -hmm. that this person heard? Was there a bird perhaps? Because we know birds now can speak. Like back then they didn't know birds could like be taught human speech. So like, was it maybe a bird that was just smart and like said something to somebody, right? Like there's, there's all these like little like explanations that we have now for things from the past. So I'm just Mm -hmm. like, well, what's the next thing, right? What's the thing that we all feel grounded in right now that gets blown wide open and 50 years right well, 100 like years people talk about dragons you know like most stories come mm-hmm. from somewhere yeah it could possibly be that we have the timeline long wrong for when dinosaurs went extinct that could happen yes, yes. you know they could have lived a yes. lot longer than we realize and then people's stories got passed down you know well i mean even scientifically right like a dragon is a gigantic beast mm-hmm. that despite being huge can still take take flight and be aloft on the on, on like the breeze, right? Can mm-hmm. take flight and be in the air. So in my head, I'm like, well, if a dragon is just built like a giant bird, then like their bones might be less dense than a dinosaur's mm-hmm. because dinosaurs are grounded, right? So like, maybe that's what we're looking at. Maybe the reason, excuse me, maybe the reason that we don't have examples of dragon bones and things like that is because they crumbled, right? They were very fragile. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it was their outer hide that was really tough and kept them strong. Mm-hmm. But their insides were like soft and, you know, like they went quickly, like, or like you're saying, like maybe the timeline was fucked up and people saw what they understood as a dragon, but it was really just like a dinosaur left over or, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. again, the realm of possibility is huge. Yeah. And I feel like there are some people who feel great comfort in being grounded by facts and reality. And I think that there that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. I'm not criticizing people like that at all. But I do think that, especially like if you talk to an old person, right that watched a black and white movie, like let's say an old person born in like 1930, right? They're hanging on for dear life. Like they're really getting up there. And you talk to them about going to see their first movie that was a talkie. Mm-hmm. It was black and white. The, 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 you know, the audio track had to be synced to the video. Sometimes it would be off, right? It didn't mm-hmm. look the way that you wanted it to look, etc. And then you like show them, I don't know, fucking Wally. You show them Avatar, you show them, mm-hmm. you know, like any, any kind of movie in like an IMAX that's 3D where you feel like you're in it and you give them that experience. Like that person never thought that was real. They never thought that was possible. Yeah. Color TV was like, oh shit to that person. Right. Like, mm-hmm. so to me, I think like 
I think that there's a certain amount of humbleness that like I get from reading fiction. Like there are some people who don't like reading fiction. They only like grounding themselves in what's real and what they know. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I get it. But to me, like imagination, I think is what drives an innovation and an invention because like without imagination, everything is just status quo. You never, you never question anything. There's no reason to, you know, reach further or reach beyond. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, the idea, even that there are vampires, like, granted, there might just be a collective human subconscious where we all just kind of thought something at the same time across multiple continents. But I feel like it's not a coincidence that every single culture and every single ethnicity, every single race has a version of a vampire with that, and, but they don't exist. That's not real. Like, yeah, that's how I feel about ghost stories, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, absolutely. Oh, okay. You're going to tell me ghosts don't exist. Okay. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and we may no. one day find out that it's like, that's a, people living in a different dimension, just being able to interact yeah. with us. That's entirely possible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like maybe there's, maybe their, their plane is like layered on top of ours because again, like dimensions can exist. Like the way mm-hmm. that I understand it anyway, like there are different planes of existence. So if they're living on like a higher or lower plane than us, but in the same space, then yeah, it would stand to reason that we would see, you know, maybe like ripples from their existence if, you know, depending on where they are. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I love the intersection of science and magic. Mm-hmm. Like I find it deeply inspiring and intriguing. Um, and like this book doesn't really do that. I guess this book kind of suggests it by giving us this like real time kind of conversation that's happening with a mortal and Louis while mm-hmm. he's recounting all of these experiences that led him to that moment. But like, I do like the idea of like taking it a step further and like thinking about like how all of these things kind of are enmeshed with our actual culture. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? In real life. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Just very interesting. Anne Rice is definitely, was definitely, and is a, definitely a legend um, yeah. in her own right. Like, again, like you can shit talk her, her fucking verbosity, right? She just really goes in on her descriptions. <laughs> like, there's like there are a lot i mean this book could be half the length and yeah. probably still be good right like, <laughs> sure. but at the same time like the woman understood an aesthetic right she understood a vibe mm-hmm. and like this book is nothing if not consistent with that vibe i will say that very very consistent yeah yeah so if you're actually a vampire and you uh want to let us know um, our DMs are always open. I do. We will interview you. Yeah. <laughs> Probably via it will, Skype. It will be unbiased. Yep. It will be unbiased. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe Zoom. Um, you are not invited to my home. Sorry. Not sorry. No. Um, Come through, so to speak. <laughs> oh my God. You watched that TikTok, right? That I sent you about I this? Did. Oh, God. <laughs> so, so good. Oh my God. <laughs> no one's polite anymore, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to borrow my top hat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you should really have your own, but yeah. in a pinch. <laughs> What's so wrong about writing a letter asking for a formal invitation to someone's home? <laughs> so good. Oh my God. That creator did a wonderful job. I, yeah. A plus <laughs> plus. Whenever there's a, there has to be a Gen Z vampire movie coming out at some point. And whenever that happens, well, a Gen Z person has to work on it. Mm-hmm. Going to start there. Because I'm telling yes. you right now, if you put a millennial in charge of it, it's going to make it sound real whiny. <laughs> it's going to sound so whiny because they're going to be like, um, I just want to stay inside and play video games all day. I don't know why that's like the Gen Z thing. People think we just stay inside all the time. But, you know, okay. Uh, so I'm at least a team of two Gen Z people need to work on that movie. And I want to be there for the early premiere, please. And thank you. <laughs> and just like, let me consume that content. If there are books about a Gen Z vampire, send that my way. I do need it in my yes. life. Yes. Especially if it's just like a Lindell Vella novella. I need it. <laughs> thank you. I love being able to put these requests out into the ether. It is my favorite pastime. Thank you. <laughs> But that is where we're going to stop. And we're going to talk more about part two. And I don't know, 
Maybe they get to Europe. I'm going to assume they get to Europe. Maybe Claudia turns in an entire boat on the way to Europe into vampires. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Vampires of Penzance. Next time on Barely Bookish Podcast. So good. <laughs> Candace, where can all the people on the internet find you and the stuff that you're doing? Uh, I am, um, so I have been Candace. You can find me online at Candace the Magnificent or at that Candace girl. My pronouns are they, she, um, I am a podcast performer and a GM. Um, I am also a TTRPG performer, um, and a voice actor, uh, as well as a writer. So, um, you can find me at the, at that Candace girl on Twitter, um, which is where you're going to find most of my updates. I'm also at Magnificent One on Hive, if you are looking to jump the Twitter ship. Um, you can also find me at Candace Magnificent everywhere else, including uh, Twitch, where I am a variety streamer. I do uh, ukulele shows, Lego streams, and assorted video game shenanigans. Um, so please come through <laughs> and check me out. Um, and if you want to talk books, I'm always down to talk books. I have a fairly obscene library in my home um, because I have a problem, um, which I guess like loving books is not really a problem until you have to move. But, you know, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, please come and uh, chat me up and you'll definitely catch me on more Barely Bookish uh, for the near future until we finish this masterpiece. Yeah, we're going to have a lot to talk about in the near future. So much, so, so much to talk oh about. Oh, my God. I Yeah. This book isn't even that big. Like I have the no. mass market paperback and I was like, yep. oh, you know, we'll get through. I should have known. I was like, we'll get through this in three recordings. No, <laughs> I want yeah. you to know that part one takes up like half the book. Yep. And I was like, oh, we'll get through it. It's already parted out for us. No, I was, I was wrong. I was incorrect. No. Nope. But it's, it's funny too, because the copy that you have is a different copy than the one that I have because mm -hmm. I had to rebuy it because my mom like saw a, like a like Maury Povich or like Sally Jesse Raphael back in the day. Somebody like Phil Donahue, some talk show host, some Dr. Phil style talk show host, but in the mm -hmm. before times um, was like, there are people out there that are sharpening their teeth and they're drinking blood. And my mom was like, you read a lot of vampire novels. And I was like, I, I do. And she was like, mm-hmm. I'm watching you. I was like, watching me for what? Yeah. I'm not doing anything. So one night, like I got bad grades because I was up all night and my teacher was like, she's not turning in her homework. This person needs to do more. And my mom was like, how dare you make me feel bad? You've brought shame upon our entire family. I'm tearing up all your vampire books. And she ripped my copy of Vampire of, of Interview with the Vampire to like shreds. And I Whoa. haven't been able to find that original version. So like there's a third, that's how often this book has been, has been published. Mm -hmm. So from between 1995 and now there have been at least three different covers of the publication of this book because you have a different one than i have yeah and then neither of these are the version that i used to have in the 90s so here's so the thing like... <laughs> i hate mass market paperbacks i Same. only get them when they're like used copies and mm -hmm. this book was two dollars and i didn't own it and i i know this about myself that i hate mass market paperbacks but I always yep. end up buying it if I don't have it. Yeah. And then I like. Well, because they're always so cheap. I know. It's easier. To, it's easy to be like, yoink. That's why. Well, it's a trap. I just like buy a different version of it. That's yeah. a put usually too. Yeah. So like this one, I've predominantly read on um, uh, my ebook, you know, like I've mm -hmm. mostly been doing it that way because it's easier than mm -hmm. I can have two windows up and take notes while I'm reading it at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, I hate holding mass market paperbacks. I don't know why I keep buying them. Because it's like, you're like, <laughs> you know, I feel like a giant. You're a little like, pinky fucking. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, oh, it, get like my it's hands torn. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like, they always print it like so close to like the middle, like the bleed yep. line. I'm like, all right, yep. let me just rip this in half so I can read it, you know? Yeah. I have a hardback copy of this book. Mm -hmm. But it's like a fancy edition that's signed, and it's yeah, like in yeah. a slip case. It's like the twenty fifth anniversary, whatever the fuck. I'll show it to you next time. But it's got like a gold side. It's like real fancy, so mm -hmm. I can't read that obviously ever. No, no. Um. Yeah, I got one. I have one <laughs> book that's signed, and that one will never be read. No, I already read it. I, I bought a copy, and then I won a giveaway and got it for free signed. And I'm like, yeah. yep, you're just never cracking there. Nope, that's it. 
you go and you look at it and you go, ah, and then you put it back on your shelf. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one I like moved so carefully. Like all of my books, I had to move them to my parents' new house because they have not come with me to this, my rentals because, you know, when you assume you're never going to like actually live in a place forever, it's hard to move those bookshelves because yep, freaking heavy. Um, so yeah, they just kind of live wherever I go. But okay, we have to end this recording because... <laughs> So, too friendly. Too friendly. It's fine. But um, thank you so much, Candice, for hanging out with me. And we will catch you all in the next chapter. Bye. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Bye.